Hi, this is Michelle from The Little Things and More. Today I'm going to do my third episode in my glass series. Today we're focusing on the Westmoreland Glass Company, and we'll get started. Westmoreland Specialty Company grew out of a specialty glass company when the business moved from East Liverpool, Ohio, to Greatville, Pennsylvania in the late 1880s. In the 1890s, the company began producing high-quality glass in its pot furnaces at the new Greatville factory. In the early 1900s, the glass um, containers that they started making, holding condiments such as vinegar and mustard and lemon flavoring, they were made and they were distributed by Westmoreland. And during World War I era, the company started manufacturing um, like candy dishes or covered dishes to uh, distribute through newsstands and through dime stores. And they eventually were abandoned because they became unprofitable. And according to a letter published on the National Westmoreland Glass Collectors Club website, and I will link some of these different um, websites below in the description as well for you to search for yourself. Uh, like I said, they were abandoned because of the possibility of them. In 1924, Westmoreland Specialty Company became the Westmoreland Glass Company, and glass was only then being produced, or only the only product that was being distributed from the Great Grill Factory at that time. Westmoreland did suffer through the Depression in the 1930s like many of the other glass companies did, but they never did cease their production. First made by Westmoreland in the 1920s, milk glass was the most remarkable and prolific product this company manufactured. In fact, they were one of the top producers of fine quality milk glass in the United States. That's according to the Collector's Encyclopedia of Milk Glass by Betty and Bill Newfound. It's now out of print, but that book you can find on Amazon and eBay probably. This includes the ever popular Ten on Nest Covered Dish, which were made of more decorative milk glass in comparison to that produced from the 1940s and on. One of the most well-known patterns of the ladder milk glass made by Westmoreland, uh, there were a number of patterns, but one of the most profitable ones is the paneled grape pattern. And according to Betty and Bill Newfound's book, this pattern is marketed as reproduction glass, marked with a WG, a stacked mark. And I'll go through over the markings um, shortly in this video. Apparently, the paneled grape was the first made at the turn of the last century by another glass maker. But what most collectors find on the secondary market today is the later glass, which is thicker and whiter in comparison to the early milk glass wares. And while not quite as widely found on, um, or widely found on the secondary market today, as the paneled grape. Other popular Westmoreland patterns include the beaded grape. Some examples of the beaded grape pattern are in these uh, pictures here. There's also this old quilt pattern and this roses and bows pattern. As you see here are some of the markings that you may find on um, the glass itself. Uh, the W with the keystone around it was a marking from the 1910 to the 1929 period. Then there's the wrapping, the W and the G, and this was first used in the late 1940s. There's also the Westmoreland within a circle around, and that was in 1982. And on the bottom, you'll see a bunch of different paper tags. Uh, most of these have been torn away with cleaning. They're no longer usually on the glass. Sometimes you do get lucky and you find pieces that still do have the paper tags or the paper sticker tags still on the bottom. 
of the product or of the glass. Although Westmoreland is clearly best known for its milk glass, with 90% of the glass that's produced from the 1920s to the 1950s having the milky white hue, in the 1920s, the company did make a limited selection of high-quality decorated glass and crystal, including the hand on nest dishes, and they made them in a variety of colors and in addition to the milk glass. And in the 1950s, they even did some of the, what we know, obviously, as depression glass, the uh, a limited amount of the amber, the blue, the green, the pink, and the brown glass. In 1981, ownership of the Westmoreland was purchased by Dave Grossman. And according to the National Westmoreland Glass Collectors Club, on May 21st, 1984, the Westmoreland Company Glass Company closed its doors just a few years shy of its 100-year anniversary. The Westmoreland molds were sold to a number of different glass manufacturers, and some of those included the Summit Art Glass, Viking Glass, Blanco, and along with several others. Some of the molds are still being utilized today in the glass manufacturers. Uh, for a more comprehensive list of the companies that purchased Westmoreland molds, you can refer to the New Bounds Milk Glass Identification and Value Guide. Now we'll take a look at some of the eBay sold listings. I did a search. This is just a plain Westmoreland glass search. And I uh, basically sorted them price shipping and highest first. As you can see here is a paneled great milk glass dinnerware set, $350 it sold for. There's this Christmas punch bowl that they took a best offer on this one, but they had it listed at $450. There's another panel of great punch bowl that went for $250. There's a very interesting color uh, bowl that went for um, a best offer that they took. They had it listed for 375. There's some clear glass, another best offer. Here's one of those lidded candy dishes. This one went for 224.50. And this one was an auction. It had 15 bids. Here's one of the roses and bows. And it's a vintage cologne set. Went for $189. The swan, $199.99. Then we have some lamps. Cake stand. Here's another one, another punch bowl, 159, 149 for this tumbler set. Best offer on the dishes. 124 for this picture set. There's some of that fancy glass that we had talked about. They took a best offer. Panel great punch bowl set, 139.99. Now we'll take a look at the beaded grape uh, pattern. And this one I didn't change it. I still have it as end date basis first. So I'll go ahead and change it now to price and shipping highest. And as you can see, there's the cake pedestal. It's $65. Another one they took a best offer. Then we have another one for $51, $55. Looks like the cake stand. In this pattern are pretty popular. There are a couple more items. Here's some of that fancy glass. As you can see, this is a little less valuable than the paneled grape. Here we have the old quilt pattern. And this is the highest price one first in my um, sold listing research. A set of tumblers, $59.99. Candy dish or sugar dish, $54.99. $45 for these goblets. $80 
a banana or fruit stand. They put the best offer on that. A vanity or perfume bottle, $39. So you can see there is markability in the milk glass items and depression glass. And it does sell on all the different platforms, on Amazon, on Etsy, Bonanza, eBay. And here we have the roses and bows. And the first one we saw in another sold listing was this milk base, $79, vanity set, $75. Candle holder, $50. Candy jar, $30. The footage candy compote, $19.99. Some other ones for $19.99. And this time I went ahead and I changed the search and I put in Westmoreland Depression Glass. And this is based, this is what I came up with. We have some more uh, vanity sets, $104. Some lamps, $85. Really pretty depression glass pink salt and pepper creamer tray set for $90. The pink and the gold depression glass um, sugar cube tray and creamer, $72. These goblets went for $58. Lamps, they for the best offer on. And even when you don't know who the maker of depression glass is, like this particular one, they were treated as unknown pink depression beverage glasses, possibly Cambridge or Westmoreland. They didn't know what it was. They still got $55 for that piece or for those pieces. Here's a, one of the decorative glasses, the Bulldog, $41. Set of the Hobnail, Westmoreland. They took the best offer on that. Very interesting Santa Claus Christmas candy dish, $41. And this here is not Westmoreland, it's from Banker Hawking. But here's a nice decorative glass, $27.95. Lastly, some of the uh, different sites that I use when I do my researching for the Westmoreland Glass is the WestmorelandGlassClub.org, the AntiquesAbout.com, the CollectorsWeekly.com, Glassware, Westmoreland, or whatever glassware I might be looking up at the time, GlassLoversDatabase.com, I also do replacements.com and for this particular video, uh, The Collector's Encyclopedia of Milk Glass by Bill and Betty Newbound. It is out of print, but you can most likely find it online if you're looking for something for your reference. I also get a lot of reference materials at the library. If I know I'm going to have a collection of depression glass or glass that I need to look up, I will go to the library. It's free. You can check out the books for free. Keep them for as long as I you know, can remove them, and I scan pages if I want to scan pages, uh, so I have them in my reference for, you know, future, and I also do a lot of sold searches, belong to a lot of groups on Facebook that deal strictly with glass, depression glass, different glass companies, so if you're willing to do your homework, like I said, glass is a good thing to sell if you're okay with shipping it. Um, and doing the research, you could do well with glass. I hope everyone enjoyed this video and you have a great week. I'm not sure what we're going to be focusing on next week, uh, but I will be back with another series in this glass how to informational video. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Have a great week. Bye.